Now we're looking at the lower respiratory system. If someone develops an infection below the level of the larynx, then that's considered uh, the lower respiratory. So that's the first thing we'll color on here, this very cute crown-shaped cartilage, thyroid cartilage. So this is the larynx. Um, we call it also the voice box, aka voice box. And also this area is known as the visible part that protrudes as the Adam's apple. And Adam, as opposed to Eve, because Adam has a bigger Adam's apple, or boys do. And then uh, the primary cartilage that you can see from the front is called the thyroid cartilage. You can see why it got its name, because just below the larynx is the thyroid gland. It kind of surrounds, doesn't go all the way around the trachea, but it um, can be palpated in that region. Then the trachea continues. It's made of the same kind of cartilage as the larynx. It's horseshoe shaped, so it doesn't actually entirely encircle the trachea. The cartilage is just go around the front of it, not around the back as well. And then you can see the shorter and steeper right main bronchus. And then this is the left to separate to go to the lungs. So if someone has bronchitis, the infection has now reached all the way down to the bronchi or lower. This first division is called the primary uh, bronchi. So for first I'll label this. So here's the trachea and it has reinforcing hyaline cartilage and then it splits to go to the right and left lung. And that first division is called the primary, that's a symbol for primary, one with a degree symbol. So the primary bronchi, the right and the left, and bronchus is singular. And then you can see that each one of those, I'm just looking at one lung, not, not showing you this in both lungs. You can see it branches, and then each of those branch, and then each of those branch, etc. I actually have a YouTube video um, in a playlist on the website that shows a bronchoscopy with the camera going down to look inside. Okay, as you go deeper and deeper with each branch, each branch will have a little bit less cartilage, protective cartilage, than the one before, and a little bit less of the cilia that help to wave the bacteria or any debris up. And interestingly though, then pro proportionately, they'll have more smooth muscle. But by the time you get to the very end where gas exchange is actually occurring, there won't be any smooth muscle either because the whole point is that the more cartilage or smooth muscle or any kind of thickness that you have on the bronchi, then the less likely they are going to um, be able to be a, an effective gas exchange surface. Thin is necessary for good gas exchange. Okay, then um, you can see over on this side I've shown you um, three lobes that the right lung is divided into, although I didn't show you over here. The left lung only has two lobes. It's actually a little bit smaller, and that's because the heart is right here between the two of them. And then each lobe contains 
several bronchopulmonary segments. And each of these segments is separated by elastic connective tissue. And that stretch is really important. It's going to help the lungs be able to expand easily and then spring back. If you lose that elasticity in the lungs, which is what happens in certain kinds of um, lung diseases where there's fibrosis that occurs, so instead of having stretchy connective tissue, it's like having scar tissue in the lungs, and what that's going to do is they're not as stretchy, so they don't expand as easily, so it's harder for the person to um, inhale when they want to make their lungs bigger, and it's also harder for their lungs to go back to normal size to push the air out. So they're going to have to use more muscle strength to inflate their lungs and more muscle to deflate their lungs. So it makes um, breathing a more exhausting experience. And you notice that especially with babies that have lung disease. It's very, very tiring for them to um, inflate and deflate their lungs forcefully. Okay, next I'm going to show you... Um, well, first let's put the diaphragm down here. The diaphragm is a, a muscle that moves downward when you inhale. By so doing, it helps to expand the size of the lungs. So it's a muscle that moves down when you inhale. And then um, when relaxed, the lungs will deflate or get smaller and push air out. Okay, now let's look at another key component of your lungs. I'm going to use a blue highlighter. On the outside, just make take your blue highlighter and color this line. And this is actually attached to the body wall, this membrane called the um, parietal pleura. So when you use your chest muscles, the muscles between your ribs, to make your chest cavity larger, the parietal pleura is pulled with it. And then there's a visceral pleura. And now you're going to color between these two lines. Okay, and then that, you might remember from the peritoneum and the pericardium, that this must be the visceral layer of the serous membrane. So 
so it's actually attached to the lung tissue. And then between the two layers is serous fluid. We'll color that in yellow. But the two layers are essentially stuck together because there's just this thin layer of slippery serous fluid that makes those two layers stick together, just like two glass slides that have water between them. So let's put that, I'm running out of room, I guess, maybe down here. So we call this the pleural space or pleural, pleural cavity. And the first thing I want you to note about that is it has a thin layer of slippery serous fluid. It holds the two layers together and also prevents friction when the lungs are changing size, like either inhaling or exhaling. So that's the pleural cavity um, that we colored in yellow. So this is why when you inhale, since the parietal pleura is attached to the body wall and it's moving outward, and the visceral pleura is attached to the parietal pleura because of this thin layer of fluid, then the entire lungs will pull out when the chest cavity expands outward due to muscle contraction of the ribs and downward due to muscular contraction of the diaphragm. Pleuritis, or pleurisy, is inflammation of the pleura. And since the serous fluid is not working as it should during this inflammation, it's very painful to breathe. Okay, I'm going to stop there, and um, in the next video we'll look more microscopically at what's going on with the alveoli.